Can Saitama One Punch Vegeta? That is the question we are going to answer today by looking at each character's skills, abilities, feats, everything like that, and ultimately answer who would win if they were to fight. Quickly, the results of the last match you voted for Darkseid to defeat Anti-Man, and he will move forward in the bracket, but let's get into today's fight. So Vegeta versus Saitama, two very powerful manga characters, both from universes that are touted to have the most powerful manga characters ever, right? We've known for a long time that Dragon Ball has some of the most powerful manga anime characters out there, Goku, Vegeta, the whole crew, and Saitama, of course, the gag character who can one-punch anything, supposedly. Which you would think would make this a very difficult fight, but if you've seen another video on my channel of Goku versus Saitama, you'll know that I don't think it is super close. Now, that video that I made was a little bit outdated even at the time, so count this video as the part two. All that said, let's go ahead and break down both characters, compare them, and see who would win. And I'll go ahead and start with Saitama. So, Saitama, protagonist of the One Punch Man manga, is a gag character, as I mentioned a little bit ago. He, The idea of the character is that he is the most powerful being in the universe. He can one-punch anything. He's so strong and so powerful that nothing can even pose a challenge to him, and so he gets very bored and depressed. Throughout the manga, we see that he's pretty much invulnerable. I don't think we've ever actually seen the guy take damage before. We see that he's multi-times faster than the speed of light, and we see that he is so incredibly powerful that he can pretty much beat anything in a single punch. And I call him a gag character because he's obviously not meant to be taken very seriously. He's sort of a spin or making fun of, you could say, that tier or concept of character, kind of like Goku, who are just the super all-powerful, very strong type of characters. He is a parody of that taken to the extreme. But there is an actual story that does take itself pretty seriously at times. So I'm going to treat Saitama as if he is a real character, so I'm going to look at what we've actually seen from him and use that to determine his actual power. Early on, we'd see him do some pretty crazy stuff as he continually gets more and more powerful throughout the series, but in the beginning, we see him get smacked from the Earth to the Moon in just a few seconds, and he just holds his breath and jumps back from the Moon down to the Earth. No problem. We see him punch so hard, one serious punch parts the clouds of the sky across across the entirety of Earth. We see him take a beating from a giant monster who with one swing can wipe out an entire city, and One Punch Man casually, one punch knocks out this giant monster. All pretty normal, all pretty casual stuff so far, and nothing too crazy. But then the Garo arc starts, and Saitama's power really starts to ramp up. And it is here that his greatest feats are found, as far as I know, Post the Garo arc, I'm not quite sure what his feats are after that. I know that some of the chapters are getting retconned and redrawn, so I don't know exactly what's going on there. But from the Garo arc, we see his most powerful feats. For example, he shows off his omnidirectional punch, a multi faster than the speed of light punch in all directions. We see him and Garo punch each other's fists, and just the redirected energy from that attack pierced a hole in space. You can see it wiped out hundreds, maybe thousands of stars and star systems just from the one punch, leaving a, a hole, a gaping hole in space where all those stars used to be. Probably his greatest feat that we've seen on screen. We've seen him casually grab and rip up the entire surface of a moon. We've seen him sneeze and blow half of Jupiter apart. We see him travel through space, keeping up with Garo, who's in his cosmic god form. Uh, at speeds greater than the speed of light, and tank massive hits from Garo, which again, don't ever really seem to actually injure Saitama at all. We see him do some like Looney Tunes style moves, like moving a rift gate, moving a wormhole just with his hands, which I don't even know how that possibly works. And one of his most impressive feats is his ability to copy techniques by just seeing them one time. Notably in this arc, he copies Garo's time travel technique. He sees it one time and then is able to travel back in time and prevent everything that we just saw from happening, which is insanely impressive. And throughout this entire fight, he's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. He's constantly increasing in strength exponentially as this fight goes on. 
So again, at the beginning of that fight is when their fists collide and they wipe out all those stars of the sky, which is a multi-solar system feat, maybe like a low galaxy feat. And he's much stronger, it's stated, than that by the end of that fight, which I think would comfortably put him at least in a galaxy, if not like a multi-galaxy level of power. So he moves faster than the speed of light. We have not seen the limits to his durability, and he's strong enough to at least probably wipe out a galaxy in a single punch, and he can copy techniques. He's certainly not someone you want to mess with, unless you're Vegeta Prince of the Saiyans, maybe, because he likes a good challenge. But would it even be a challenge? Because when we look at Vegeta and Dragon Ball as a whole, power scaling is pretty high. Big shock, right? It's pretty high. And when it comes to kind of everything we just looked at, speed, strength, power output, the Dragon Ball universe, I think, just has a flat advantage. And let me explain this. So we're in Dragon Ball Super right now. We're pretty deep into Dragon Ball Super, where the biggest, highest form we've got is like, you know, uh, God of Destruction level where Vegeta's at, his ultra ego form, everything like that. But in order to quantify how powerful that is, we got to look back, right? But real quick, I do want to mention that I am crowdfunding my third graphic novel, Cardinal Starstruck on Indiegogo. It's got great story, great art. It's action packed. Please do follow the link in the description to check out the Indiegogo page. Look through all the information about the campaign and the book itself. And if it interests you, please do consider backing. I put a lot into this book. I think it's really great and I think that you will really enjoy it as well. So again, please follow that link, and I appreciate any support. Thank you. If we look at something like Super Saiyan 3 Goku, the most powerful iteration of Goku by the end of Z. At that power level, he was comparable to Boo, who was a galaxy level threat. It was stated that he could wipe out a galaxy, not all at once, but over time, wipe out a galaxy. At the start of Super, we see Beerus, like one shot Super Saiyan 3, just by flicking him in the head. After that, Goku's base form is able to compete against Beerus whenever he unlocks his god key, and so we know Goku's base form is more powerful than Super Saiyan 3, more powerful than Galaxy level. And then on top of that, he's got Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan, and Ultra Instinct. And then Vegeta is pretty much the same, they're very comparable in terms of power. Vegeta has his base form, which is again above Galaxy level now. Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan. Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Evolved, and then Ultra Ego. At this point in Vegeta's journey, he's like multiversal in terms of power. And it's been stated by Beerus, who is a God of Destruction, that Vegeta has the power of a God of Destruction of a different universe. And we saw that to be true in the Tournament of Power whenever he beats Top, and Top is a candidate for the God of Destruction. He is at that power level as well and Vegeta was able to defeat him. And again, that was just in the Tournament of Power, and Vegeta is way more powerful now than he was then with Ultra Ego and just his additional training and like his forced spirit vision ability and everything like that. He is so much more powerful than he was then. And then he was at a multiverse level of power being on par with the Gods of Destruction. Because Beerus, who is one of the more powerful Gods of Destruction, when he was like in his lazy, untrained, unmotivated form, where he was just going to different planets and eating food, he could tap his finger and split a planet in half. And both Goku and Vegeta are more powerful now than he was then. Goku in his base form against Beerus was said to hit, be hitting so hard that the universe was shaking and they were afraid that the universe was going to be destroyed just from their battle. And again, they are magnitudes and magnitudes more powerful now than they were then. Because it can be kind of hard to remember or put into perspective, but Dragon Ball characters were destroying planets pre-Super Saiyan 1. Base form Frieza could destroy a planet pre-Super Saiyan 1 Goku by a mile. So when you get to characters like Ultra Ego Vegeta, channeling God of Destruction energy, it's on a whole other plane of existence in terms of power. Not to mention being a martial arts master, having a variety of different energy blasts and attacks and things like that. 
and the whole idea of Ultra Ego, the more that Vegeta is taking damage, the stronger and faster he's getting. All this to say, I think that Vegeta, in his base form, probably beats Saitama. Ultra Ego is like such overkill to the point it's not even funny. Um, I think he's just on a completely different level of power. However, I know there's people out there who's going to say, well, Saitama can beat anybody. That's the whole idea of the character, is that he's this joke character that can beat anybody. And if I, like, really disconnect my brain for a little bit, I can imagine a scenario in which Saitama could win. Say, if we're assuming that he will continually increase exponentially in power the longer that a fight goes on with a more powerful opponent, and we're assuming that he can perfectly mimic and copy techniques, you could assume that his durability is high enough to hang with Vegeta, and you know when, when Vegeta fights, he, he starts in his base form and gets more and more powerful. We kind of saw that against Broly, where he was powering up with Broly as the fight went on and on. Something similar could happen here, where Vegeta is getting more powerful, but Saitama is keeping pace because he's getting more powerful, and Saitama isn't necessarily at a disadvantage with like combat because he's mimicking Vegeta's technique, and so theoretically he could climb up and up and up and eventually overpower Vegeta whenever Vegeta caps out at Ultra Ego, and Saitama is more powerful than that. But in order for that to be a reality here, you have to do a ton of assuming and bank on something that we've never seen before. We've never seen Saitama reach the level of power that Vegeta's at. We've never seen anything close to that, really. So it would be kind of like headcanon, right? It definitely wouldn't be like an official victory or anything uh, in my mind, but I guess it is theoretically a possible scenario that something like that could happen. And I've said before, I don't doubt that at some point in One Punch Man's history or his series, he will get that powerful, because uh, he's probably going to fight God and, you know, when you're at that level, right? Um, I think that he will eventually get that powerful, but from what we've seen right now from Saitama versus what we've seen from Vegeta, I think Saitama gets absolutely wiped here by, again, base form Vegeta can probably wipe him, Ultra Ego you know, what are we doing? You know, it may as well be me fighting Ultra Ego. But with that said, it's not up to me. It's up to you. You all get to go vote. So make sure you go to the communities page on my YouTube channel and vote for who you want to win, and who you want to move forward in the bracket. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.